interesting because I'm always here to present my results. <laughs> so I have a mission this morning. It's because I'm the first speaker. So if uh, someone has uh, Suzanne uh, difficulties to wake up before 10 o'clock, so I will try to, to make uh, an interesting presentation. And I will have a terrific tool because I have a phragitis this morning. So I have a horrible voice. I'm so sorry. And uh, I will try. I will take advice from, from the cam. I take a honey spoon before to <laughs> my presentation. <laughs> and I hope I, I go through it. So how to implement uh, evidence-based data into uh, public health policy? I'm going to present the, the example of the EMI program. EMI, it's a French acronym for, for motivational interviewing in maternity wards for the immunization of the uh, infants, uh, children, uh, inf enfants in French. And we are going through the results of the Promovac studies to the implementation of uh, a provincial public health program. So uh, I will present briefly uh, what is implementation science. And we have two years uh, ago, uh, well, uh, presentation of Nick Sevladis of what is implementation science. And I uh, will briefly resume uh, what is it. I will present to you uh, briefly the Promovac concept. What is motivational interviewing? And we have uh, last session, last year, a workshop of motivational interviewing. And I, I hope that you enjoy it uh, for the people who were attending here last year. And uh, after we're going through the results of the Promovac study through the ME program and the implementation of the ME program and the first results of the evaluation of the, of the program. So uh, move from results to implement implemented uh, public health uh, strategy is one of the priority of the Canadian Institute of Health and there is a strategy plan of the Institute of Population and Public Health to move to this kind of people or, or research. So what is implementation science? It's the study of the strategy uh, leading to the adoption of research results or evidence-based practices in health care. And uh, the evaluation is not only on the outcome of the interventions, but also to understand the underlying processes of the implementation and to better understand why an intervention worked in a specific context and to try to optimize the benefits of these interventions and to ensure in sustainability and to generate knowledge that can be applied to the context. So the focus is not only on the effectiveness of the interventions, but also in the evaluation of the process of implementing an intervention and on the effect of the process on the interventions itself. So there is three type of evaluations. Uh, you could make evaluations of the process and you would determine if specific program strategy were implemented as planned and you focus on the program implementations and it used to determine why a program has changed over time or to address the inefficiency of the program in delivery of service. You can make formative evaluations and that helps to refine or improve a program and to evaluate a program during the development in order to make early improvements. And uh, so you use this kind of evaluation when you're starting a new program and to assist in the early phase of the program development. And we, and I will present after some several examples in the ME program. You can make also summative uh, evaluation. Uh, it provides information on the program effectiveness and it is conducted after the completion on the program design and it helps you to decide whether to continue or to end the, the program. And finally, you evaluate the outcomes, and uh, it should be focused on the change, comprehension, behaviors, practice that result for the program activity, and is used to decide whether the program affects participant outcomes and to est establish measure clear benefits of the program. So in implementation science, there is several framework model could be used, and we choose uh, for the ME program, the consolidated framework from implementation research developed by uh, Dan Schroeder. In this uh, framework, there is five main domains uh, in the framework. The first domain is the intervention itself. You could have uh, two parts of the interventions. There is a core component. It is the component of the interventions that you don't want to be moved, to be changed. You want to keep this, uh, this component very early during the progress process of implementation. And there is uh, some adaptive periphery uh, component of the interventions that could be adapted during the process. And so the formative evaluation 
allow you to modify this uh, peripheric, peripheric uh, component to adapt the intervention through the processes of implementation. There is a outer setting, it's the economical, political, and social context in which the organization where the in intervention will be implemented. Uh, it, there is an inner context, it's the structure, politics, and intern culture of the organizations. There, sorry. There is uh, the individuals involved uh, in the implementations. There are major actors of this implementation and they could influence other individuals taking part in the implementations. Individuals uh, of the inner setting are the targeted population and individuals taking part in the implementation. And finally, uh, there is a process of the implementation. It's a series of actions uh, made at different level of the organization to realize the implementation. And so most important, the intervention will go through modification according to the implementation and could be different at the end of the process of implementation. And we are going how through the Promovac strategy we are going to a EME program could be different, a little different uh, between the results of studies and the program. <coughs> so there is several constructs in the uh, Sephir model. I don't uh, uh, made uh, the description of all the constructs because there is 39 constructs. So you have the construct on the slide and you can consult it after and I go it through, uh, through it. So now, I think for, uh, in vaccine hesitancy, there is an information paradox. Uh, in fact, we have seen uh, yesterday and lots of times that traditional educational approach uh, is ineffective to address vaccine hesitancy. Uh, we know that information, facts, education a lot do not change belief behavior and facts even backfire. And to give more facts about vaccine or about vaccine preventable disease uh, using a prescriptive language and use fears based tactics can backfire or reinforce vaccine hesitancy. So traditional educational approach don't work. And when we ask some parents, new experience of communication about what routine childhood vaccination, what, what, should, what would they want? And they wanted more information that they were getting. So what's wrong? <laughs> they wanted more information and all the tradi traditional educational methods are failed. What's the problem? You, know, you think there is a solution of that? <laughs> In France, we have an old humoristic uh, a TV emission. It was a shadow, I don't know if you know that. And uh, there is a, a device, it's, uh, it was, uh, if there is no solution, it's because there is no problem. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's, the question is, is maybe more complicated than that. In fact, parents wanted more information that they were getting, but they wanted balanced information about the vaccination benefits and arms. They wanted information presented clearly and simply, tailored to the situation and in a good time. So the question maybe is not, should we give some information to the parents, but maybe is how to give some specific or adapted information to the parents. So uh, it's uh, why I developed the, the Promovat concept. Uh, the Promovat concept was born uh, uh, be because I'm a clinician, clinician physician, pediatrician, so I have some clinical experience, research experience, and I have lots of experience of children who suffer from meningitis, uh, pneumococcal, mesococcal, who parents uh, were not hesitant, they only lack of information about the disease, about the vaccines. So there is a, a problem with the lack of information. I conducted a study on rotavirus vaccine in France 10 years ago, and we have very high uh, difficulties to recruit patients to vaccinate the infants with the new vaccines. And with pediatrician, we start to uh, put uh, in Mati Wars an educational session about the rotavirus vaccine, the disease, and uh, the program of vaccination. And we have a high level after of acceptation. So the question is, if it could work for one new vaccine, could it be work for all the vaccine? And finally, when I read all the literature about the traditional uh, education methods and I see that it often fail, I think about to put motivational interview techniques in, in the manner how to give some information to the parents. So the, the concept of Robovac is to, to give some information to the parents very early at birth because you can reach every parent at birth in multi-worlds 
with an educational information session, but using motivational interviewing techniques. So motivational interviewing, we have a, already a, a workshop, so I don't uh, be very, very long of this. It's a collaborative style of communication. It's very important, it's collaborative. Uh, it is designed to strengthen the personal motivation of the person. And you explore the person's own reason for change. So it's a complete shift of the paradigm. You are not talking to someone to, to tell him what he should do, but you're working with someone uh, with, within an atmosphere of ac acceptance and compassion and try to help him to take his own decision. And it's completely different that to say something, to do something, you try to help the person to find herself the solution of her ambivalence. So it leads to a stronger decisional process. So what are the uh, results of the Provox study? There is two studies. The first one, it was a regional uh, cohort study. And uh, after we moved to a provincial randomized controlled trial. And the goal of the study was to assess the effectiveness of the information session at birth, uh, targeting immunizations uh, based on motivational interviewing techniques uh, in maturity world, on vaccination intention, vaccine coverage of infants, and vaccine hesitancy score. So the first study showed uh, a great increase of vaccination intentions of 15% after the interventions. And it was followed by an increase of vaccination coverage in infants at seven months. Uh, there is a more than 7% uh, of increase of the vaccine, co <laughs> vaccine coverage. And uh, this increase of vaccination coverage persists during the time during the two zero to two years periods. And uh, during this period, using a logistic regression, we are able to demonstrate that infants uh, whose parents receive the interventions have 9% more chance to get vaccinated completely during the two zero to two years periods. So after we move to uh, provincial uh, randomized controlled trials, and we find the same results. We have a significant increase uh, in vaccination intentions uh, globally in the provincial population of 12%, and a significant decrease is the PACV score of uh, 40%. And more interesting, we have seen a great effect <coughs> on the different level of vaccination intensity. After the intervention, there is a, a great increase of the low level of vaccine intensity that move from 56% uh, to uh, near than 80%. And on the contrary, the high level of vaccine intensity decreased uh, by a threefold. Uh, it was confined by the uh, vaccination coverage too with an increase of 6% at seven months. So what works with these techniques? And uh, the more I think about the decisional process of vaccination of the parents, the more I think it's very complicated. And so sometimes parents are, are faced with controversies and there is lots of uh, determinants of the vaccination intention or vaccination behavior, but each parent is different. So uh, there is global determinant for vaccination intentions, but maybe for one parent, there is sometimes very important with vaccine risk, but for the other parents, it's not, it's not the same problem. And when you adapt your intervention and you put the focus on what is the main determinant of vaccination intention for these parents, you have more chance to construct a, a more decisional, robust uh, process for his decision. There is a lot of controversies about vaccination and uh, all of that uh, conducted to a great ambivalence for parents and the the fantastic tool to fight against ambivalence is motivational interviewing. And it's maybe with the use of motivational interviewing, you are going to a, a stronger decisional process of, of vaccination. So now we move to the, to the EMI program. Uh, it was uh, possible with the partnership of the Canadian uh, Public Health Agency, uh, which uh, <coughs> uh, we participated in the Immunization Partnership Fund. Uh, there is grants of two or three million per year at the Canada to, to support projects aimed to improve vaccination coverage in Canada. So we applied with the Quebec Ministry of Health to implement the ProVac strategy in multi world in Quebec. So the first phase of the program, we found from the EPF and the Ministry of Health, start last year. 
and uh, it aimed to implement the Pomovac strategy in all Matepi wards uh, with more than 2,500 annual births. It represents more than half of the births of the Quebec and near than uh, 50,000 uh, births. And after that, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, we're going to start the second phase of the program uh, next year. Uh, that will be to implement in all Matetti wards in Quebec the, the Pomovac strategy according to the results of the evaluation of the first phase. So the aim of the evaluation of the program was to assess the implementation and the impact on the program in real life. Uh, the first uh, strategic decision was to uh, put in Matetti wards uh, specific staff for to, to give advice to parents and that was vaccination counselor. Uh, those vaccination counselors receive specific immunization training, uh, training on the base of immunization, but also training how to give information about immunization to parents, to translate the language of the protocol of immunization of in the language of parents, to be very adapted to the parents, and we have a specific training for that. And there is a specific training in motivational interviewing that we have developed uh, in previous years, in our previous study, that we use to train the vaccination counselor. The specific aim of the program was to describe the implementation of the program and to identify the barriers and facilitators in this implementation and to assess the impact of the program on the vaccine intention and vaccine hesitancy score in parents and in vaccine coverage in children in Quebec. <laughs> so we have several uh, tools to, to make the evaluation of implementation at several levels, L the levels of the vaccination counselor, uh, maternity ward, HCPs, uh, manager, administrators. We're going to use a qualitative study, quantitative study with the self-administrative questionnaire, individual meetings. We're going to evaluate the training of the vaccination counselor. We're going to evaluate if we're able to reach all the population or only a percentage of the population. I'm going to evaluate the ac parents acceptation of the, of the program. We're going to evaluate also the program acceptability uh, in parents and satisfaction, uh, as I also said, and uh, several lots of things of the implementation itself uh, are going to be uh, evaluated. So we're going to evaluate the outcomes also uh, of the program with the vaccination intention score, the vaccination hesitancy score, and the knowledge about vaccination in parents, and going uh, looking about the results of this uh, evaluation and to compare the results of the Promovac studies. And finally, we, using the Quebec Provincial Registry of Vaccination, we're going to uh, evaluate vaccination coverage at several times during childhood. So now, what are the preliminary results? So be very indulgent. The program started only a few months ago, so it's very, very preliminary results. We don't have the subactive evaluation of the implementation of the program, but we have some, some key ideas of what works or the who don't works in the implementation. At the level of vaccination counselor, uh, we have reached uh, near the targeted uh, recruitment. We want to recruit 20 full-time equivalent, and we be able to uh, to reach uh, near that uh, that target, and so we train 23 vaccination counselor. Uh, it was mostly the half time uh, half time, time uh, to work, and the first lesson uh, of this evaluation is that we have planned to make three sessions of training for the vaccination counselor, but as the recruitment didn't go at the same. Uh, uh, ra rapidly in the same uh, material words, we have to move from three to six sessions of training uh, because uh, you can't make some big groups, so we should make some little uh, smaller groups and to make more uh, session of, uh, of training. Uh, we also, uh, and it was not planned at the beginning, developed a virtual community operative. We have already said yesterday that it is very important to support uh, people involved with vaccination and uh, not to be alone. And so we created a virtual community of practice for vaccination counselors so that they could share the experience each other and uh, share the experience about some 
the question of parents, of attitude of parents. And in this uh, virtual committee of practice, the vaccination counselor could ask some question to, to EMI experts or, or to immunization experts. So as they are not alone, lost uh, with all the parents, they could have uh, ask questions to experts and share the experience. At the level of the training evaluation, we have a high level of satisfaction of the training. And uh, we made a final evaluation of motivational interviewing competence because we want to see if the vaccination counselor really made uh, use in my skills. So uh, we, we made uh, this evaluation and the most majority of vaccination counselors succeed to, to use uh, in my skills, but for five of them, we should make additional supervision to support them to use uh, in my skill. For this evaluation, we use the MyZ questionnaire. It was a questionnaire that we previously uh, developed to uh, analyze the, the acquisition of the EMI competence in the domain of immunization. And you could see uh, during the, the f different phases of the, of the training, we have an increase of the EMI skills application and the self-confidence to apply EMI related skills. At the level of the population uh, could be reached, uh, last week, we were able, uh, near than uh, 20,000 parents received the program. And uh, uh, for the, the eight first months of the program, we were able to reach 80% uh, of the population. So it's very different uh, according to maternity wards because some maternity wards start the program later and some maternity are only be able to reach 40 to 50 uh, percent of parents, but some maternity wards are uh, also able to reach now near the 100 percent of parents. So globally, uh, at the beginning of the program, we were able to reach uh, 80 percent of the parents, and the acceptability rate was very high with an uh, acceptability rate of 97 percent uh, in the parents. So uh, what about the outcomes of the implementation? Uh, we uh, made a pre-post test design using uh, the questionnaires that we validated in the previous study. And during the first uh, four months of the implementation of the program, we randomly selec selection more than 2,500 parents to give questionnaire before and after the interventions. At the level of satisfaction, there is a high level of satisfaction with 95% of parents appreciated to participate in the program and 96% of parents recommend that the program could be offered to the other parents. And more interesting, 98% of the parents feel that the counselor respected their point of view regarding vaccination. And it's very important with the use of EMI skills. In parents, there is an increase of the feeling to have a sufficient information to take the decision of vaccination, which is near than 94% uh, uh, in, in the parents. There is a global vaccination intention before the uh, program of 76%. Uh, and there is a, an increase of this vaccination intention uh, by near 12% and the same results uh, as we have in the air city, in provincial air city. There is also a decrease in vaccination hesitancy score, a decrease of near 30%. And with the same uh, thing of the level of vaccination hesitancy with uh, an increase of the proportion of parents in the low level of vaccination hesitancy after the intervention and a decrease uh, in the high level where with only 6% of parents who are again uh, with a high level of vaccination hesitancy after the interventions. So it's not conclusion, it's not results, but uh, I received this result uh, two days ago and as I love you, I want to share with you this result. But it's, it's not results and I, it's not a conclusion. It's only uh, a hope that the program could work. We, we're going to, uh, we look at the vaccination coverage and we uh, make an historical uh, co comparison of the, uh, the year before the implementation of the program and the period after the first period after the uh, implementation of the program. So for the uh, vaccine co vaccination coverage at thre three months, we, we see an increase, a significant increase uh, between these two years uh, in all the regions that we uh, were implemented the program. 
And the more interesting thing, it's uh, for the region number uh, oh, 13, sorry, at Laval. Uh, the program was stopped two months after it started because the two vaccination counselors uh, moved to another post and there is no program after. And it is the, the region that there is the, the m lower effect. Uh, there is no effect after uh, the cessation of the program. So it's not result because it's only a sentence, uh, but it's, uh, um, we could hope to have some effect. And I think, uh, as uh, Jonas said, I come back in one or two years to present the, the, re the final results and to have some good results to, to, to present to you. So what are the, the perspective uh, of the, with this program? So for the, for the implementation, uh, for the second phase to implement in all maternity world, so we were able to, to see what, is, what are the core components of the intervention and what could be adapted to the organization, local organization. So the core component is to have vaccination counselor dedicated to, to do the job in multi wards. It's not the staff in multi wards who sometimes do uh, one or two hours of, of advice and uh, the rest of the time do the job. No, it's a, a specific post to do the, uh, to, uh, the, uh, the counsel uh, con uh, for parents. Uh, the core component uh, also, you should use EMI techniques and to be sure that the vaccination counselor be very well trained in EMI with a supervision with the EMI experts. And uh, we should apply uh, this uh, concept in multi wards in order to have an effect, uh, early effect of uh, the first vaccination at two months. The adaptable component is about the training and immunization. As you could see, we should adapt the training and make more uh, motivational tailoring sessions that we have planned at the beginning. And it was very difficult to organize more and more sessions. So we are moving to uh, e-learning and web supervision. Uh, to adapt session to a smaller group uh, of uh, vaccination counselor. Uh, at the level of the healthcare worker involved uh, in the uh, job of vaccination counselor, there are several models could be used. Sometimes it's uh, maternity ward nurses that worked as vaccination counselor, but all the day, and sometimes the other day they work in another task, but they it's uh, in their job to do the vaccination counsel uh, to parents. Uh, sometimes there is postpartum nurses uh, who are involved in vaccination counselor uh, at multi wards, but after they're going to visit parents at home, etc. Et so there is several models in several organizations, and we're going to summarize of these possibilities uh, of model. So with this program, could we change the perception of the vaccination in the population? Uh, we're going to be to reach each year, 2% uh, of the Quebec population, and in uh, 10 years, the, the program could be reached 20% uh, of the population, and more interestingly, uh, it could be reached half of the population aged uh, by uh, 20 to 40 years. So uh, it would be to maybe sufficient to have a critical mass population to, to change the vaccination perception in Quebec and maybe to have a herd immunity about the vaccination perception, and maybe it, uh, I am very happy to see the, the topics of uh, Stephen Lewandowski uh, at the first night of the meeting when he's talking about inoculation and maybe we are inoculate some uh, maybe good things to think about vaccination at parents at birth and maybe they be lower susceptible to controversies after. So uh, I want to acknowledge all the research team uh, of the Provax study and the big team of the ME uh, project with more than 50 percent to, to work on the program. And uh, many thanks for your attention. And I'm again, so sorry for my horrible voice. Sorry.